I mean, have you ever played a game with rollback netcode? I mean, I can, for example... Never. It, I'm so curious. Like, try, how is it compared to a regular game? Um, try try playing Goro or Killer Instincts. I can play people, like, in Chicago, and it's better than the guy down the street in, in Tekken 7. It's crazy. Yeah. It, it's, it's, um, it's, 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 a, it's a significant difference. And delay-based netcode should never have really been implemented for not just fighting games, but any action game, really. It's, it's not suitable. It's, it's good for, like... I don't know, maybe slow based, slow strategy games or something. Certainly not like StarCraft or anything, but you know, anything that's based on reactions, delay based is just incompatible. Yeah. yeah. It has certain advantages, don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, Guilty Gear Strive was just announced to have um, rollback netcode, and hopefully that a starts a fire, or that's the impetus which leads other Japanese developers to start. Um, yeah, you know, coming to their senses and realizing that <laughs> this is this is not um, a want, this is a need, really, for fighting games in the 21st century. Is but, there, like, yeah. pros or cons about it? Because I, I really have no clue. So I'm, I'm just a noob when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah I mean... Me the, too. Um, the cons are, look at Street Fighter V. If it's not implemented correctly, the characters jump, jump literally jump around. It's teleportion, yeah, it's madness. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's gotten worse recently as well. Like I played through like through the very seasons of the net roll, of the netcode, and it has gotten worse recently. They, they, they attempted to fix it recently, but they just made it a little bit worse. Yeah. So yeah, no, Street Fighter Five is definitely not a good example of rollback. But um, I think probably the best uh, netcode of any fighting game out there right now is Mortal Kombat 11, and that is pretty incredible. Mm. Um, generally, yeah, I heard it's got like mm. yeah. yeah. Um, generally, Western developers are much more on it. I mean, when it comes to uh, netcode for finding games, this is just going off of Mortal Kombat 11 and Killer Instincts. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, chat, but Skullgirls also has rollback. It does. It does. It does. Yeah, I haven't actually played it much, but um, I haven't played Skullgirls, but I can definitely attest that um, Ki and MK11 have fantastic. And and Ki is like c- close to seven years old now. <laughs> and um, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, the American developers are like just ahead of times, really, compared to Japanese developers mm. when it comes to their mm. games. Yeah, it's just the culture, I think. You know, it, it's it's mm. the same issue that that Frame mentioned earlier. It's you know, um, all Japanese companies are quite set in their ways, and they're they very resilient to change. Video games. Like video games are this fun thing for the whole family. A fucking Nintendo. Their consoles, they always have a new gimmick with the controller. It comes with a built-in dildo that you shove up your ass and you play it on the toilet with, you, you know, your cousin or whatever. And you look at those disconnected fucking commercials. Like, who the fuck, like, has their, like, mother play video games with them? It's like this <laughs> hyper-competitive entertainment industry that people, like, do for a living now. But they're like, no, because you can do, like, this to control Mario. But... Uh, I mean, I get I get annoyed when there's such a fucking disconnect. Like, Nintendo can stay competitive because they can make great uh, interactive, like, immersive experiences like Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. But if you try mm-hmm. to, like, make any... Like, if you try to, like, Dark Souls that shit where you have to be, like, crisp and it's difficult and you're trying to control it with this fucking thing mm-hmm. that gyrates and it has a built-in television and then, like, parts detached and stuff, like, no, can I have, like, a crisp fucking frame data... And and a controller that works and is precise without input lag, so that I can play the game well, please. Because but that's yeah. the Western audience. But here in Japan, it's about sitting around with your grandmother and you know eating fucking cookies and playing. I mean, Animal Crossing seems like a pretty cool game, but it's literally you like uh, it's a sitting in your room simulator. Do you want to go <laughs> over here and sit over here? Okay. Do you want to go over and sit here for a while? You know. Do you want to look and see what's in the fridge? Oh, nothing. Okay, because I can't go outside and buy groceries. And that's it. And it's like, it's sold out all over Japan. <laughs> yes, it's the biggest um, selling game on Switch so far, I believe, in its initial week. It, it, it's Fuck it's sold in hotcakes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it reminds me of? Do you know that uh, episode of South Park where I think it's Mr. Garrison? He, he invents uh, renewable energy, uh, like a transportation, a, a car that takes no energy. It has no emissions. It's completely efficient. It, it solves the environmental cri- crisis. But to operate it, you have to shove a dildo up your ass and sit on it. And then it drives you. 
And then, like, the new I, version I comes that. out, and you have to have another dildo down your throat, and you, like, you, like, and it goes up and down, and it just fucking uh, spit roasts you. And then, like, at the end of the episode, <laughs> it's South Park is genius because it, in the end of the episode, it comes out that it doesn't actually need the dildos. You can just take them off. That's just, that's just the way he built it. Like, he invented renewable energy. <laughs> but he just uh, put the dildos in because he's, like, a massive ass man. <laughs> And that's like that's gonna be the next Nintendo console. You have to <laughs> literally sit on it to make Link go, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you do it with your sphincter. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh like no God. wonder the the Smash guys are still playing Melee. But it's the game you play with a con, and the character moves crisp. <laughs> you have to go into Smash and turn off items. You have to turn it to two players. You have to pick a uh, pick a specific stage. Because it's a fucking party game with shit going on everywhere. Eight people. <laughs> Frame. Yeah, you, you have oh, such a, you have uh, such an uh, elegant way with words. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> my mother is like my mother is like messing. Like, I I can't believe your your parents watch this shit and you're going off about like dildos. That's and... <laughs> that's part of that's one of the reasons I do it though. I like I love embarrassing my mother, but she's like, if you if you play really nice and you wear a nice shirt on the podcast, maybe Namco will call you and ask to collaborate. I'm like, mom, you don't watch my videos on like Leroy and shit. Uh, that br- that ship has sailed. Yeah, those those <laughs> those bridges have been burnt. 